the BRICS partnership, which has been growing in importance and influence over the years, must be harnessed to drive an inclusive global economic recovery. Advancing the African agenda for us is a strategic priority as South Africa during its chairship of BRICS. Hello, welcome back to Tuntum Network, ladies and gentlemen. I'm back your way again. I'm Cyrus. Uh, today is the second day of the summit and all the presidents were able to take their turns and make speeches. And it's been an amazing time watching it live on television. And President Cyril Ramaphosa of South Africa has done tremendously well. Uh, we have to applaud him for that. Standing in for the whole of the continent. I mean, he's been magnificent at this point. Bravo, bravo to South Africa. You've done a great job. And so they all took turns, like I said, and they made speeches, all of them being very profound. And so I've broken it down into different sections and I'll be bringing it to you. And alongside, I'll be bringing some of the videos of statements that were made by individual presidents. And I'll tell you this, a lot of good things are coming. A lot of good things are coming. All right, so let's go on. And I'll start with the theme of the BRICS, the 15th uh, summit of the BRICS. The theme was BRICS and Africa Partnership for Mutually Sustainable Growth, Development, and Inclusive Multilateralism. All right? The objectives are on trade and investment on an equal global play field. Okay, so clearly from the onset, when President Sir Ramaphosa was giving the theme, and the objectives of this meeting, I was like, yes, yes, for the first time, the topic being discussed here is, is, of, is of clear understanding of mutual benefit to every country that is coming on board. It's not as in a situation of a superior or a senior speaking to a junior. No, this time it was equals planning on how best they can all come together for a, a unified you know, benefit for all nations. And so Prime Minister of uh, India is there. President Xi Jinping is there. President Lula da Silva is there. President Putin couldn't make it yesterday. I mentioned it. So uh, his foreign minister is there. Lavrov is there. And uh, yours truly again, President Cyril Ramaphosa, you've done a tremendous job. He was the chair for the whole program this morning. Now, I'll bring you except as the president spoke, a little bit of it. And remember, you know my intentions already. I only speak or give commentary on things that are relating to the continent Africa. If it has nothing to do with Africans benefiting, I, I am not giving any commentary on it. So I'm going to share with you except of the video that has to do with things concerning the continent Africa. Excellent. So let's, let's go forward. So, President Lula da Silva was the first to speak, and please take a listen. The BRICS, uh, uh, we should say that all suffer the consequences of the war. The most vulnerable population in the developing countries are the ones that are hit more uh, uh, in an unproportional way. If you listen to everything President Lula da Silva said, uh, these are the key pointers that caught my attention, okay, because it was related to Africa. I'll read some from here. President Lula da Silva of Brazil said, uh, he mentioned the creation of the new development bank, something that I discussed a few months back when the mutiny was, was scheduled to come in August. And it was something that got a lot of people excited because everybody was tired. We are still tired of of the West and their banks, the IMF, the World Bank, all their institutions and how they are able to manipulate countries where the unfairness of countries having access to so much money and other countries not having access to that much money and different interest rate being given out to different countries because of whatever reasons, because of whatever ratings. So I'm happy uh, President Lula da Silva took off and mentioned 
how his interest is there in the creation of the new development bank. He also spoke on the empowerment of women, which I also believe strongly that is something we should encourage. Women should be encouraged because they form the greater part of our population. In everywhere in the world, except for a few countries, women are the majority. So clearly they should have a lot of say in how things are being done relating to them. And then he also spoke on peace and the effect of the war on Russia and Ukraine on small economies. In fact, it has also affected Ghana. I didn't know Ghana, my country, had so much business uh, uh, bilateral trade with Ukraine until COVID hit Ghana. And then I got to know that all the grains we have been eating in this country, the cereals, all came from Ukraine. And it got me thinking. I mean, all the arable lands that we have in this country, all the fertile land that we have in this country, we still have to wait for a European country to grow harvest, ship it to Ghana before we can, we can eat? Wow, wow. So when the, the war hit Ukraine, it immediately had an effect on our economies. And I'm sure it's not just Ghana, but every part of Africa where some way, somehow, they, are, they, are, they, are, they have relationship with Ukraine had to be affected. And currencies... We're, we're, we're swinging left, right, center. So he also mentioned that. But in contrast to what he said, okay, this is what I also thought. So, so the BRICS are thinking of the new development bank. And there was a time in the history of Africa, AU, sorry, when there was this conversation of the African bank, okay, and we saw a few banks coming around. There's a bank in Ghana called the Bank of Africa. And when the Bank of Africa came, the, the, the perception that most people had was, this was the bank that was going to be the bank where all African countries will contribute money and so be able to borrow from that bank at a very reasonable rate and pay back in installments. And so what happened to that Bank of Africa? Because as it stands now, it doesn't look anything like what we anticipated it was going to be. Does it mean that AU on its own cannot figure out how to also build their own bank? I mean, we have so many countries in Africa, 50 or more. I may be wrong. All right. So at what point is this 50 or more countries in Africa going to actually sit down and plan on a realistic way of building up its own bank? So that we don't have to go to the World Bank or the IMF to borrow if the need be. Because clearly there's a lot of billionaires in the world who are from Africa. If you didn't know, okay, the richest man in the world, Elon Musk, is from South Africa. So in any situation, if we had a Bank of Africa, Elon Musk should also have his, his money there. Because it's going to be profitable. And as business people, I know if it's profitable to Elon Musk, definitely he's going to put his money there. But maybe there is another twist to it. Perhaps these African leaders are not really in support of building an African bank because most of the loans they take, they don't intend to pay back. How do I know? Because they've taken so much on the markets already. They've taken so much from IMF and the World Bank and from other places which they weren't able to pay back. So perhaps that is one of the reasons why they are not pushing for it because they cannot see it through and pay back whatever they borrow from there. That could be one of the reasons. I don't know. I mean, these are things that I play with. That if all these billionaires in the world can have their monies in the IMF and the World Bank and through there they can give out loans and be dictated to countries, then all these billionaires in Africa should can also come on the table when we are setting up a, an African bank for the interest of Africans. All right? I don't think this is a bad idea. The second on the list was uh, President Putin. And it, clearly it looks as if Mr. Putin was speaking in a recorded video. The video that was placed looked like a recorded one. But you could see people chanting and being excited at the background. I, I didn't really care about that. But 
Let's take a listen to what Mr. Putin We are strengthening the bilateral cooperation on such areas as diversification of supply chains, de-dollarization and transfer to local currencies in our mutual settlements. He started off giving, you know, clarifications or reasons for the war between Russia and Ukraine and, and how it can be stopped and how he's open to what do you call peace talks and all that. Maybe, maybe he should be speaking more of that to the EU, okay? Maybe the EU should be paying attention to that. Because if this war comes to an end, it will be good for all of us. And if President Putin is open to having, you know, a peace talk, I don't know why or I don't see why any country or, or union wouldn't want to sit down with him and have a peace talk. But that is just my little bit of uh, uh, mind that I'm saying there. And he went further to say this. Uh, BRICS should set up a global research trust fund, something like that. And he's also proposing a Russia-BRICS uh, collaboration in terms of uh, programs that is earmarked for next year's BRICS meeting. Okay, so next year, BRICS will be meeting in Russia, and he will be the chair. And he's speaking about programs, activities, you know, collaborations that can go on between BRICS and the rest of the other four countries. And the encouragement of the use of local currencies in trades among the BRICS countries, which I thought was a tremendous thing. But I'm thinking about this, okay? So President Putin is talking about collaboration among nations in the BRICS union, BRICS group. But all this while, we all thought that there was going to be a lot of talk on a new currency on, on, for the BRICS so that they could trade among themselves with one common currency. But if you listen to what uh, President Lula da Silva said and you go on with uh, uh, President Putin's speech, there is nothing there that is you know, saying anything concerning a new currency being brought to the table. Instead, he's talking about using the local currencies as pertaining to countries to trade among the BRIC nations. Wow, 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 wow. That is a sharp contrast to what we all were thinking. That, in fact, in this meeting, there will be a lot more talks on that subject. But clearly, it looks as if they've, they've, they've moved away from that. Maybe they, they discussed it in secret, which we didn't get the opportunity to see or hear. All right, so let's continue. President Modi took his turn. And let's take a listen to what he said. We have had many achievements during this journey. Our new development bank is playing an important role in the development of the countries of the global south. Through its contingency reserve arrangement, we have created a financial safety net. Big satellite through initiatives such as the BRIC satellite constellation, the vaccine R&D center, mutual recognition of pharma products, we are bringing about positive changes in the lives of ordinary citizens in BRICS countries. All right, so if you paid attention to what President Modi said, he's, he's also confirming the new development bank for the BRICS and I think that is a great thing, okay? It's a great thing. It's Af if Africa cannot put together a bank and BRICS is doing it, I think it's a great thing. All right? And uh, he's also speaking on BRICS creating their own satellite in space. BRICS having their own satellite in space. BRICS having their own satellite in space. And I think today I, I saw on the news that India has sent a satellite or have landed on the moon today all right india has landed on the moon today i mean india is developing so fast that it's shocking everywhere you go you either hear china or india they are dominating the whole area and then you come to africa and we are talking about something totally different when people are thinking of landing on the moon we are thinking of how to get our next meal i mean Roads are a problem. Water is a problem. You know, 
jobs are a big problem in this continent and all that. And the continent is full of youth. Meanwhile, other countries which just came around, okay, in terms of development, have all made big, 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 big strides. They've all gone so far, they've left us behind. We are so far, far, far away behind. I remember once I, I, I was with a Chinese partner that I, w I used to work with in Ghana. And we traveled around a lot. And you always say this to me, Cyrus, Ghana looks like when China was like 30 years ago. And every time he said this, some part of me was really sad. But some part of me was saying, but that could be true because you've been to China. And so today, India is also leaving us behind. I mean, everybody is leaving Africa behind. What is going on here? What is going on here? He also spoke on different schemes that have been implemented in India, which are successful, that he is willing to share with the rest of the BRIC nations. In terms of education, in terms of, you know, AI, in terms of technology, in terms of different things, agriculture and all that. And medicine. And he also mentioned... Uh, a seat for AU at the G20. I think that is a great idea, to have a seat at the G20. And he's also in support of the BRICS expansion. And I, I, don't, I don't see why they shouldn't support this. So far, uh, President Modi has supported this. And I think it's a great thing for all the president to also support this. And some, somewhere down the line, President of China, Xi Jinping also supported this. And President Ramaphosa has been beating that drum. So it is only a matter of time. It's only a matter of time where the, the, the membership of BRICS increases from five to more than 20. And that is where there will be a real competition between the BRICS nations or whatever that name will be in the future and the G20. The next person on the line was uh, President Xi Jinping. Let's take a listen. Alright, so after listening to what President Xi Jinping of China said, this is a quote that I, I took from what he said, and it's a very powerful quote. This is what he said. Development is an alienable right for all countries, but not for the privilege of a select few. Development is an unalienable right for all countries, but not the privilege of a select few. In other words, what President Xi Jinping is trying to say to the rest of the BRICS nations and to every other country or small country out there is this. Development can be in your own country. Every country should be developed. No country should be a third world country. You shouldn't wake up thinking of where the next meal will come from or where you will lay your head or where to find a job. These basic things in life all should be able to be sorted out or education, or water, or health care. You know, development, as he said, should be the right of everybody, every nation. Every nation should come to a point where their roads are fixed, there is water flowing, there is education, there is funding for, for all manner of businesses and all that. An environment where people can eat three times a day. Yeah, I support that. I support that strongly. And he mentioned it, and I'm so proud of President Xi Jinping. All right, and he mentioned other things. So many things he mentioned. And uh, he also mentioned, there is this part of where he mentioned his lack of interest in where there are small blocks or small groupings within the BRICS or outside of the BRICS or whatever he was trying to say, which is something I strongly support, that once we have BRICS and we have an agenda, let's stick to it. Let's grow it from there. There shouldn't be a point where there are small groups breaking out of it and having w whatever plans on, on the side. Yes, 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 yes. These are things that we should encourage. And, and he also mentions of, uh, mentioned BRICS innovations. Uh, AI study groups has been agreed by BRICS nations. He also supports 
the new development banks and the expansion of BRICS uh, membership and the promotion of data center for BRICS and all these. So nations of Africa especially, nations should be warming up. I mean, Ghana should be warming up. Nigeria should be warming up. Every nation in Africa should be warming up. If at least we cannot get in individually, we should be getting in in, in groups or in blocks. ECOWAS can get in there. ECOWAS can get in there. The SADC region, you can also get in there. So that we all become significant on the global stage. That time has passed where we have to wait for the top few countries to make decisions and then things trigger down there and then we eat from, from under the table. The table is now set plain. Everybody should play a major role in helping their own nations develop. I'm so much in support of this. Like I said, President Ramaphosa, you know, has done tremendously well. Tremendously well. And then there is this part where President Ramaphosa is speaking of, you know, the, the media taking a rest. And this is indirectly telling them, wow, this is, this is, this is where you guys stop, okay? So go play around on the playground. This is where we make real decisions. And so the media at this point are, are moved out of the building so that the nations will now think of how to implement these things. That is in my mind. That is what I think. That when the media is not there, that is when they make the real plans. What they gave us was the headlines. Now they are going to break it down and take decisions based on what they, they agree on. Well, I don't want to speak too much on this, but all in all, I support the BRICS. I support uh, any move to help this continent, Africa, develop. I support any situation where our currencies can be empowered. We can trade with our own currencies. If I am in Ghana and I have to trade with a Nigerian, I don't need to go change it into a dollar before I go to Nigeria. Okay? If we can have our own currency to trade with, I support that. And so anything contrary to this, you can call me whatever name you want, but I think Africa should also develop. We don't need to go around begging. And for your information, Ghanaians, our president, President Anaru Danko Akufuado is in South Africa. And I pray that he's not going there, you know, to, to, to speak of borrowing more. Because that is my problem with the government. Even though I, su I supported this government so much, so much in all the two elections. This is my problem. At this point, I feel like no amount of money is enough for them to turn anything around. It looks as if they have created such a big hole that whatever money you pour in there runs down like into a rabbit hole and it's sucked in and it cannot come out. Nothing seems to be sticking at this point. So I hope he's going there to cut us a good deal. He should make some deal with China, make a deal with India and with Brazil. Brazil is good in the airline business. All the Boeing planes that are being made in the world. You know, Brazil is making a lot of airlines. We don't have an airline company in Ghana. President Anado, if you are there, you should be speaking to President you know, uh, 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 Lula da Silva concerning how we can get airplanes and our airlines going in Ghana. We don't have any here. Meanwhile, India is going to the moon. India is on the moon. Rwanda has an airline. We don't have an airline in Ghana. So if you are a, a Ghanaian, you are coming from the UK, you are coming from the USA, you fly a foreign airline into your own country. So sad. So sad for this country. So I hope he's going there to cut us a real deal. Bring us real development. And not go there to, to ask for how much he can get or how much he can borrow in addition to how much we have borrowed already. Ghana is already in a, in, in a rabbit hole. In a sinking hole. And we need to come out of this. Uh, that will be a little bit of what I want to say for now. So I'll be keeping an eye on how the meeting goes and I'll be taking notes and I'll come back again if the need be today or tomorrow and then give, keep, you, keep you informed on decisions that have been made. And remember, I am only here to give you concrete information on what will benefit the continent Africa and not what is going to benefit the West or whichever country. Whichever way Africa enjoys or benefits, I'm in full support of it. And after the summit ended this morning, they continued off in the afternoon uh, with the BRICS Business Forum, okay, where they are meeting the business community of Africa.
Many presidents are there. Many business moguls in Africa are there. And there's a lot of uh, uh, business discussions going on there. Opportunities are being created for Africa. These are good times. And I hope our president is taking advantage of it. It should benefit us also, you know. Thank you so much for being a part of this podcast. Uh, please remember to subscribe, share, like, leave a comment if you have to, and help us grow this channel. We want to hit 1,000 subscriptions by the end of this month. You can help us by clicking on the subscription button. Please help us do that. Thank you so much. God bless you. And you'll see me very, very soon. Bye-bye for now.